Homestead Comfort Food. Grandma's meatloaf. Okay, I'm gonna get this meatloaf mixed up and I'm gonna cook it in a cast iron skillet. And this is just your um, old fashioned meatloaf. I like meatloaf, I always have. I even like it better even the next day because I like making sandwiches out of it. But I've got deer burger here. Ever since we've uh, harvested deer, that's what we use. We don't have any uh, ground beef or anything like, like that in the freezer. So, you can use deer burger, or you can use beef, or you can use partial beef and a little bit of pork, just whatever you want to use. I've got a little, probably about two and a half pounds here is what I've got. And uh, I've got a half a cup of oats. I've got a half a cup of uh, breadcrumbs. I usually just make my own breadcrumbs, and what I used was, um, we make homemade uh, croutons. And I took some of them croutons and put them in my little processor and made uh, breadcrumbs. I've got a big tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic. I've got two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. That gives it a good meaty taste. I've got a teaspoon of Montreal steak seasoning right here. Um, now you can make your own steak seasoning. I've got a recipe for that or this is, you can buy it like this, Montreal steak seasoning. So i got a teaspoon of that. I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt, and you can put another, like, half a teaspoon of pepper in this, but your Montreal steak seasoning has pepper in it, so I'm not going to add any more. It just depends on how much pepper you like. I've got a, about a medium onion, really in trash, probably a small onion cut up. And I've got some of my dried peppers that's been sitting in here. I didn't drain them, but I've been trying to revive them there. But these are my dehydrated peppers, red bell peppers and green bell peppers. Or you can use fresh if you got some. I didn't have any, so I'm using my dried. These dried bell peppers, are they're really good. They have a lot of taste to them. And we like a lot of bell peppers, so I'm going to put... whatever equals to a whole bell pepper. And right here, you can use this that you uh, hydrated your bell peppers in. You can use this to put in as your liquid, and it'll be good. I'm going to put in one egg. I've got about three-fourths cup of tomato sauce. And at this point, if you want to put uh, a little bit of crisp tomatoes or diced tomatoes that maybe you've got canned or you just got some you want to use, you can put some of that in there too. That'll be good. I'm not going to put the whole jar. So I'm going to take my clean, very clean hands and uh, I'm going to start mixing this up. Now, there's all kinds of different recipes for meatloaf. In fact, I've got one that I'm wanting to make, and it's an Italian meatloaf that has a, a lot of different ingredients in it than just your regular old-fashioned meatloaf. And it's got mozzarella cheese on top and everything, and I want to make that some night. So 
smells good. You also got a Mexican meatloaf that you use your Mexican seasoning in, like your cumin, your chili powder, and your garlic, stuff like that. That would be good. I like the old-fashioned meatloaf. My grandma made meatloaf all the time because something like that you could stretch for your family and feed quite a bit. Uh, but I just remember always, like the next day, we'd have cold meatloaf sandwiches. And I always ate mine with mayonnaise. I'm a mayonnaise eater. Mr. Brown likes salad dressing. He likes cook, uh, sweets and say Cool Whip. <laughs> So I'm just going to mix this up good. It smells really good. I can smell the uh, Worcestershire sauce. I can smell the Montreal steak seasoning in it. And it looks like it's going to hold up good. The egg, a lot of people don't like putting egg in their meatloaf. Um, I don't know why. Maybe they just don't want to eat egg. But uh, it is a binder. It helps hold your meatloaf and plus it moistens it too. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of this juice that was left over from hydrating my bell peppers. I'm going to put some of that in there. Okay, I think that's mixed up good. I'm just going to bring my arm skillet over and I just, I will just a little bit on the bottom, just keep it from sticking so bad. And I'm just going to plop my meatloaf in here and I'm going to press it down and it's going to cover the whole bottom of my, it's not going to be like in a loaf pan, it's not going to be loaf shape, it's going to be in the shape of my arm skillet. That looks good already. Now I'm going to make a... We all know that meatloaf has a brown sugar topping on, on the top. Ketchup. Some people make it with ketchup, some with tomato sauce. I'm going to use some chili sauce in place of the ketchup. Tomato sauce. We like chili sauce. See if I can get it out of here. And I'm going to put about, it's probably about a cup and a half chili sauce. I'm going to put my brown sugar out here. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. And I'm just going to mix this up good. Some people put mustard. I'm going to put just a little bit of my homemade apple cider vinegar. Not very much, just a, about a teaspoon. That's going to be kind of a, a sweet tart topping there. You can make it sweeter if you want. Put more brown sugar in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread half of this on it right now and put it in the oven. My oven's been heating at 350. I'm going to put it in 350 oven. And I'll check it in about 45 minutes. But after about 30 minutes in the oven, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put the rest of the Topping on it. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna get this in the oven and uh, we'll be back when it gets done. While that meatloaf's cooking, I'm gonna make a side dish here and talk to you for just a little bit. And this side dish comes from a lady that I watched watched her video. She was frying potatoes and cabbage together. And of course, we all fry potatoes and cabbage, but have we ever fried them together? I haven't, but it looks so good, and that's what uh, what I was craving tonight. So anyway, that's going to be one of our side dishes. But I want to talk to you a little bit too. I'm going to put I'm going to put just a little bit of my fresh lard in here. I rendered some more lard today. You know, that's that's a really easy process. There's not much to it. I do it in my slow cooker. And, uh, of course, you know, I've done a video on it, so. It's just easy process. I really like it. Okay. I'm going to put, I've got just a little bit of bacon grease from this morning. I'm going to put a little bit of bacon grease, too. <laughs> you know, I didn't say this was going to be healthy. But, anyways, it's going to be good. I've seen, uh, her channel is Little Jordan Farm, and we just, we kind of find, found each other. She just started her channel, I think a couple months ago, and of course I'm a new channel too, and she's such a sweet lady. She, I mean, you're not going to get more real in more country than Little Jordan Farm. Um, I just, I, I really, I really enjoy watching her and listening to her talk. She raises goats. I believe her family were dairy farmers. And I forgot to look, and I may be wrong on this too. I'm thinking she's from Tennessee, and I could be totally wrong on that. I've got to look. But she shouted out and tagged me in a collaboration a while back, and I just, everything just kind of got stumbled together. I never have done it yet, so I'm just going to put it in with this video. It's a collaboration to name five things that you accomplished in 2018, and I think I can name five. I mean, they may not seem very important to some people, but I guess to me in my homestead it was. Uh, the, the collaboration was started with Practical Modern Practical Modern Homestead. And then Little Jordan Farm tagged me on it. So, if y'all get a chance, go over there and check both the channels out. Because I think you're just really going to love them. I'm going to take my potatoes. Get them in here and get them started. I'm sorry if I'm in your face. Now, you don't really, I guess, sometimes think what you've really accomplished. But I do know, the one thing that I know that we did get accomplished is we got more raised beds built, which we were needing because we don't put in a truck patch garden anymore. Me and Mr. Brown just can't. Our backs and our knees just can't do it anymore. So we do have pretty good-sized garden now. It's mostly raised beds right now, and we are going to work on a, a fruit orchard because we have just moved on this homestead about four years ago, so we're still getting things together. We moved from the old homestead and moved here, so we're having to start over again. Um, okay, we didn't we accomplished getting some beds built. We did accomplish, the main thing was to get a fence all the way around the garden because our chickens, I'm putting some onions in here, our chickens would not stay out of the garden. And you know chickens, as much as we love them, they want to get in and scratch everything up. So we had to spend $200 to put a fence around that garden. And it's a good thing, it keeps all the varmints out. Put a little bit of salt and pepper on that. Now I'm going to put my cabbage in here. So I've got layer potatoes, layer onions, and now I'm going to put my cabbage in here. And the whole time that she was cooking this, my mouth was just watering because she was just cooking everything I love, and that's fried potatoes, onions, and cabbage. 
So, two things I have accomplished. Raised beds, fence around the garden. Uh, the third thing I accomplished for myself, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the homestead, but it has to do with me. And after many, many years of doing pretty much the same job at work, I finally was able to go on to a different job, which is going to be easier for my back. I had back surgery many years ago, and uh, of course I'm getting older. I've got psoriatic arthritis, which means it's in my hands, it's in my, my knees and everything, but that's okay, that's just part of just part of life. There's a lot worse things going on with people, so I don't complain about it. So that's three things that I accomplished. Um, let's see. We did uh, start planting different things in the garden that done really well that I hadn't planted before and you know sometimes you get hesitant about stuff like that you just really you don't know but you know as many years as many days had a garden we always stuck to the main things that we know that we would put up at eight so I accomplished kind of stepping out of my box and uh, planting some different things in the garden I did do some uh, some different canning that I've never done. So I accomplished, you know, going outside of my box there and doing that. So as far as the homestead, that's, that's pretty much, you know, everyday life it just seems like you kind of accomplish, you know, little things that you don't really think much of, but you do. Because, you know, living on a homestead, it's work. You're always doing something. Anyways, I want to do a shout out to Little Jordan Farm and try to put in a little bit of on the collaboration that she tagged me on. And like I said, y'all go check her out. And uh, check out Practical Modern Homestead. I'm going to let these fry up a little bit, and uh, we'll come back when everything comes together.